Now, take a minute to think of a truly excellent hospital, a very busy place, a go-to place, extremely well organized, excellent and very focused staff, excellent outcomes, as good as Johns Hopkins, guys in St. Thomas Hospital in London. Definitely a place that you would want to take your loved ones to. What if I told you that this hospital is in India? We all make assumptions about the developing world, especially about products and services, lower quality, less demanding uh, customers, less regulation, corruption, bribery. A lot of the conversation in development is about taking ideas and um, benefits from the developed world to the developing world. However, the reverse conversation is also important. I want to talk to you today about the Arvind Eye Care System in southern India. And the reason I picked Arvind is because if I try to think of institutions in the developing world that any of us can learn from, Arvind is one of the first that comes to my mind. Arvind is the biggest eye care provider in the world. So to give you a sense of scale, Arvind is doing about two thirds of the eye care volume of the NHS every year at one hundredth of the cost. They, they also have a 40% profit margin and referring to the previous conversation about uh, taking uh, funding, uh, they take very little funding. It's also not a Disneyland that's been plopped into a rice paddy in South India. They are a homegrown institution. So you might be wondering, how can they do this? How do they pull all this off? What I found to be very unique about Arvind is that they have an intense long-term focus. I was talking just last week to their executive director, Tulsi Ravella, and I knew I was going to be speaking in this forum, so I asked him, uh, hey, Tulsi, if, if we were to take a really smart executive from a big multinational, which may be some of you over here, and plopped that person into your team at Arvind, what would their biggest challenge be? And Tulsi said, that's me. He had worked at a big multinational before he joined Arvind. And he said that the biggest challenge he had faced in his early years at Arvind was getting used to this long-term thinking, this long-term focus. This focus that Arvind has is etched into their mission. If you think about most organizations, their mission would be to offer best-in-class products and services, or better than the competition. But if your competitors suck, then you could be pretty average and still be better. Or you might uh, choose to offer even higher quality than your customer actually needs, as long as you can con somebody into paying. Arvind's mission is to eliminate needless blindness. This is a very absolute target. You'd know if you were done. It's also, by definition, long-term focused. You just can't do this overnight. And this long-term focus is a driver of radical change at Arvind. I'll share two examples with you of this. First of all, you're probably still wondering, how could they possibly have outcomes as good as Johns Hopkins 
and the Moorfield Eye Hospital at such low cost. Part of the reason is that Arvind essentially re-engineered cataract surgery. So a cataract surgeon at Arvind is doing only those parts of the cataract surgery which only a surgeon would have the expertise and the skill to do. Every other part of the surgery is being done by other folks who are less skilled, they're less experienced, and they're less well paid than the surgeon. So cataract surgery is an assembly line process at Arvind. And you have more than one patient in the same operating theater. This is forbidden by law in the West. And yet, Arvind has lower infection rates than the best Western hospitals. Cataract surgery, wherever it's done, is a very simple process. And it has extremely successful, high success rate in general. You have to be really courageous to take a good and well-running standard procedure and completely reshuffle it. The reason that Arvin did that is because of their long-term focus. That gave them the luxury to actually start to rethink from scratch. And that long-term mission to completely eradicate blindness also gave them the courage to do that because they knew that given their resources and given the size of this problem, they just couldn't manage to do that by just doing the same thing better. They had to do something very different. The second example that I'd like to share with you is about a radically different way for doctors to interact with their patients. I gave a talk four years ago at Arvind about shared medical appointments. Let me just explain what this concept is. The idea is that if you imagine that you have a long-term disease, diabetes, I'm not wishing this on you, but imagine that you had either diabetes or hypertension, one of these long-term diseases. You would need to go for periodic doctor checkups every three to six months. And suppose that instead of your usual one-on-one -on -one appointment, you opted to go into a shared appointment. What would happen is when you reach the doctor's office, you would be in a room with other patients who have the same ailment as you have and the doctor. You would still get your full one-on-one -on -one appointment. Each of those patients would. But the other folks each time would be watching and listening. So that's essentially a shared appointment. I've talked to doctors all over the world about shared appointments, and most of them have never heard of such a thing. Raise your hand if you've been to a shared appointment. Heard of one? OK, so the truth is that the Cleveland Clinic has been practicing shared appointments for over 20 years successfully. It's pretty obvious that they would cut costs because the doctor doesn't have to repeat a lot of the same general information from one patient to the next. The really interesting thing, though, is that evidence is starting to gather that they also improve outcomes and increase patient engagement. But despite this, most of the doctors that I tell with great enthusiasm about shared medical appointments wouldn't even dream of trying one themselves. They're just too different. So when I went to Arvind and I spoke about shared medical appointments, I then came back to London and I figured I'm done. But then, I got an email from them a couple of weeks later. They said they wanted to try them out. Not for cataract, 
but for glaucoma. Glaucoma is a lifetime eye disease and you're gradually going blind. The only way you can uh, slow down that progression is by going to these regular follow-up appointments and taking your adjusted medications. Interestingly, Arvind didn't want to do shared appointments in, in order to reduce costs. They're already extremely streamlined on costs. They wanted to increase the chances that their patients who have glaucoma actually come back for these super important appointments. But nor did they want to mess with their incredibly streamlined glaucoma clinics or even with the doctors. So they decided that there's always a bunch of patients waiting around in a glaucoma clinic between the stages of their regular glaucoma appointments. So why not do a test using these patients? So they took a group of patients, glaucoma patients, into a room with a counselor, not a doctor. And the counselor did a shared counseling session, essentially going one-on-one -on -one to each patient. So the third patient, I happen to be there, the third patient reached into his pocket and he takes out these eye drops and he starts to ask the counselor a question. And the moment he did this, the second patient, who had already had his turn, he reached immediately into his bag and he took out his eye drops because now he had a question. The counselor proceeded through all of the patients and the last patient, I remember, was a woman. She said, I've had glaucoma for 20 years. And a patient on this side of the room jumped out of his chair saying, can you see? She says, yes, I can. And I've been taking my eye drops every day, twice a day, for 20 years. You could literally feel the impact of that statement. The counselor had been saying, take your eye drops, take your eye drops, but it was so much more powerful when the patient saw, said it. So having seen this, Arvind said, okay, now we're willing to try it with a doctor. But again, we won't mess with our weekday schedule. So they bring in a bunch of patients on a Sunday and 20 patients and the doctor for the shared appointment. At the end of the appointment, I walked up to the doctor and I asked her, what do you think? She said, it felt like a wedding. <laughs> if you've ever been to an Indian wedding, they're chaotic, <laughs> contained chaos. <laughs> At any rate, they had taken feedback from every patient. So they said, let's try it one more time. So again on a Sunday, and this time they had eight patients and the doctor. It was a huge success. One patient literally stood up in the middle of the appointment and in broken English said, one million thanks. Now Arvind said, okay, we'll bring it in on a weekday, but they chose their lightest weekday, which is a Friday afternoon. And finally, after doing that for a few months, we're now doing a randomized control trial with Arvind uh, to study the benefits of shared appointments. 1,000 patients. Uh, my PhD student, Nazle Sanmez, is involved in this trial, and our co-author, Ryan Buell, at HBS. But how come this huge organization serving millions of patients was willing to experiment with this extremely radical way of delivering care? Again, the reason is that long-term focus. That long-term focus is giving them the drive to go for radical change. And this very nimble experimentation process that I described to you, that is giving them a way to go towards these goals. To me, Arvind's business is development. And I'm really excited about the new institute because it's going to enable these learnings from institutions in the developing world to flow to the West while also enabling the reverse type of conversation. Thank you.